This will be the continuation of the previous step. It got cut at the 55th minute and 30th second. And there we were looking. Intensified stage of discipline. In that intens intensified stage of discipline, they will come to the point of death. And while they are in the point of death, they would love to say, Lord, protect me in this. Heal me, guide me, and I will be your bond slave. I will do this, I will do that. They will show all mannerism of hypocrisy before the Lord themselves. Because they think Lord can be easily mocked. And yet, God the Father for the gracious work of Christ on the cross, and as the prayer of Solomon as well in First Kings when he has done that, the same prayer what we find in John chapter 17 as well for us. He would give him a chance, thinking or knowing that he will be the same because dog tail is always bent. It will never become straight. He knows very well what is there. He is the one alone who could say the end from the beginning. What are you, how we will be? Very well, he knows. Yet he gives you a chance because with a sense of a hope at least you will recover back. At least you will serve Christ our Lord of God with your true fear and heart. He knows very well how to give you that chance and he gives you that chance. But even in the tendency fashion of discipline, if you don't correct yourselves, you know what happens? The third one, it is called sin unto death. The first one, warning discipline, warning by many people to say, come back to the church, learn the word of Lord God. Don't be walking in the narrow, don't be walking in the broad roads because the roads which are leading to broad, he would say in Luke chapter 13, emphasizing that they will take you to death. So don't walk in the broad roads. Walk up in the roads which are narrow. Because these narrow roads are very, very important. They, many people will love to walk in that narrow road. That's what we read over here in verse number 24 of Luke chapter 13. Strive to enter at the straight road. The word straight over here meant to say stenos, which is called over here, dear brethren, to emphasize the point that these are the roads where you're going to get extreme pressure upon your head so that people will not really love to walk in these roads. These roads are the people where they love to take the word of Lord God, but with all troubles, as the third, pa as the as the as the seed parable, the third part or the second part, they get stuck up in the details of their life and they don't love to come back. So he said, strive to enter, make yourself in the process to fight. What are you able to fight? Agonizomai. That is to enter into a contest so that you can go to frequently fight, fight up in such a way that you are able to fight for your prize. And there he said, fight in such a manner that you're going to talk in the terms of Lord's will. So contend with the prize. So when you're able to contend with the prize, the things over there, dear brethren, he would said, strive to enter. Again, the word over here, Ais Erkomai. What it is, you make up your body in the sense of making the Aleph energy to fill up the empty space. The word Aleph meant to say bull kind of energy. The energy wherewith the bull would say, nothing to burden, but simply carry the Lord. The strength of a bull, what we can find in one of the faces of the cherubim. No matter what, it would simply follow that. It would simply become that bull energy so that now we are going to enter it in your body and that will be the filling of an empty space. The space which you have lost, you are going to fill it up. So he said, strive to enter at the straight gate. The word straight meant to say narrow. The thing which is, which is making you to stand very close about. And the things which are going to stand very close about is nothing but make up your paths to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, as much as better it could be to kneel down in his presence. So dear brethren, here he said, straight gate which is called to be pule the meaning of the word pule or dear brother it meant to say what first the entrance of your thought process to be the viewpoint according to the word of the lord god if it is not in the thought process according to the word of the lord god you will never come to know that you should be a disciple born by getting every thought into captivity for christ and then if you're not able to become a disciple for sure you'll never know what is that authority upon your body 
only when you are a disciple to the Lord God. If you are not the disciple, you will never become that authoritative one to the will of Lord God. So he would say, enter through that gate, the gate which makes you to get every thought into captivity for Christ, the gate which will make you to have authority as per the word of Lord God and become the will of Lord God. Enter through such gate. That's what you have been called to walk in such gate. But you know what we are doing? <laughs> we are not entering through the straight gate. For many, he says, I say unto you, will seek to enter. The word zatio, which meant to say, to place the things in order. The Hebrew word over here called to be bakash. What to meant to say, search for something for an answer. Their body from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun, they want to renovate their thinking. But for sure, they are not going to renovate their thinking at all. They fail in that thinking. They fail to renovate in that thinking. So the word over here, Zatio. So he said, Bakash, to enter in. They want to enter again the word Ais Erkomai and shall not be able. They will not have this Iskun strength in them because day by day they are not having the process of carrying the cross against any wall of fortification to dig and take the word of Lord God and become from the rising of the sun till the going of the sun the word of Lord God to these people. Therefore they don't have Kazakh. When they don't have Kazakh, they are failing to have the Gebor strength in the Lord. That is, they fail to erect a structure which shall be in your body to be renovated as per the word of Lord God. So when they don't have this Gebor strength, ultimately they will not become that which has been called to be abundant to the Lord God. You know, the will of Lord God the Father, as he said in the Gospel of John chapter 15, God the Father is glorified only when you are able to produce more fruit. Not just fruit. God the Father doesn't want you to simply produce the fruit. He wants you to produce more fruit. With that more fruit, God the Father is been glorified. If you have not been there in the process of glorifying Lord God the Father, according to that more fruit, for sure, dear brethren, your life is a failure. Therefore, he says over here, in this process of John chapter 15, in verse number 1, I am the true wine, and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, so that it may bring forth more fruit. The word purging meant to say catharsis. He goes to cleanse it out. And why does he cleanse it out? Because he wants you to get more fruit. Don't stand at one point and say that after reading the Bible in the English, it's enough. I am eligible to preach. Not at all. You are an idiot. You have to go back and read, first of all, the word of Lord God in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Don't stand even at the point of original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Go back to dig and study the word in the ancient pictographical language of the Hebrew so that you can understand the depths of the Lord's mind in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and reveal them to the people because people are perishing without knowing the word of Lord God. People are not able to realize the will of Lord God. They're not able to walk according to the standards of the mind of Lord God. So they're going to perish. So your work is to dig and take. Your work is to teach them so that after being purged, that's what day by day cleansing. How are we going to have the process of day by day cleansing with the process of making up to thrush it out under your feet. Every thought which is not in accord with the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, simply make it up to be trampled under your feet. That's what you have been called. If you are not able to trample it down under your feet, for sure, dear brethren, you will never understand that you have to be cleansed. Cleansed from all mannerism of filthy impurity. Every word you take, if you are not able to get back to the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and think in the thoughts where this word has been used, how it is being used and how we have to translate it. If you're not going to come back and, and first delete out the things of your translations and then come back to the Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic, you're not purged. You may be simply producing the fruit, but you're not producing more fruit. So he said he purged them so that they might bring more food. 
Now you have been cleaned through my word which I have spoken unto you. Therefore abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abideth in the vine. No more can you expect you abide in me. So the process over here, how we are going to get more fruit. The more fruit has been bought only when we are going to abide in the word of Lord God. So dear brethren, God the Father has been glorified when we are able to get more fruit. But the sad part is people are not able to realize that they have to get more fruit through my Christ. And yet whatsoever they are able to do, they are simply able to spend the time in search of vanity. Therefore he says in over here of verse number 8, Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. How and when God the Father has been reaching the process called doxa, when you bear more fruit, not just fruit, you are looking only for fruit, but the Bible is emphasizing more fruit. When you produce more fruit, then only you are his disciples. Therefore, God the Father is going to love you more and more when you are able to produce more fruit. So, dear brethren, here we look and emphasize the point to teach that in Luke chapter 13, in verse number 24, saying that, Seek to enter in and shall, many shall not be able. Why they shall not be able? Because, dear brethren, they are not having the process of Kazakh. And Kazakh is day by day carrying the cross and following my Christ. Not week by week as religion-minded Christians. It's a day by day process of carrying the cross and learning the word of Lord God. That's the meaning of Kazakh. So that now you're going to get your every thought by wall of fortification, digging and taking the word of Lord God from the rising of the sun till to the going down of the sun. That's Kazakh. From Kazakh, the result is Gabor. You'll become a man of a great strength. You'll erect in your structure according to the viewpoint of Bible doctrine renovated in your body through your head. That's Gebor. When you have Kazakh, you're going to become Gebor. When you have Gebor, ultimately you need to reach more fruit, atsam, numerous, vast. How it is going to be vast? When you're going to fix your every viewpoint of life under any pressure to talk about the terms of Bible doctrine. Then only it's abundant. If you're not in the process of abundance to the Lord God, you cannot understand it. More fruit is needed for us. And God the Father is glorified only when you are able to produce more fruit. But the people who are not able to strive or enter into the straight gate, they are simply able to walk in the broad gate. Broad gate leadeth to death, but they are not happy to look upon that. They are simply able to talk the terms of this broad gate. Broad gate, come weekly once to the church. Broad gate, go and do this witness. Broad gate, do that or do this. Help the poor or get baptized and you will be saved and all these things. That's broad gate. But the narrow gate is day by day they carry a cross no matter what the word what we read the three daughters of Job day by day Jemima and the word Kejia what it is to chop off all the things which have been there before the presence of the Lord God in carrying his cross the word Kejia the third one Karen Hapuk then you will get a horns in a sense that you have been really able to be glorified for the Lord God that's the word Hapuk meant to say you open up your mouth like a scribe if you're not able to open up your mouth like a scribe the Lord God the Father is not glorified are honored. Becoming like a scribe and talking the things of the word of Lord God is much fruit what we can give to Lord God the Father for his gracious grace which has bestowed upon us being the sinful mankind of all time. You have to reach that stage called Karen Hapok. And that is like a scribe. And many people have failed today to know the difference between a scribe and today people are not even able to realize whether they are disciples or whether they are Christians or not. If they are Christians, they would be for sure disciples to the word of the Lord God. But the sad part is they are not at all Christians. They think and they claim that they are Christians, but they aren't. Yesterday we read that. If they are disciples, then only they are Christians. For a span of one year, for more than eight hours, that is what we have looked, 2,920 hours of preaching. 
if we come one hour solid doctrine and if we're able to meet and match 2920 hours of teaching it will be approximately somewhere around 55 years after 55 years of being trained we can call you that you are disciples to the lord or those disciples trained once can be called christians to the lord you are not even able to be in the path of becoming fruit to the Lord God. Far less you can say you can get much fruit to the Lord God. Dear brethren, you don't have anything to take on this earth. If you're having the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, preach the truth as it is. Don't steal the words. The great pen of Jeremy are what he claims. If you have faithfully the word of Lord God, teach it. What is chaff to the wheat? Why do you want to steal my words? From your neighbors, tell them what exactly is the word of Lord God. Let them know what exactly is the mind of Lord God. Let them understand what exactly is the plan of Lord God. If not better, don't become a preacher. As we illustrated for you to say, after four sons, three are successful. The one is the fourth one is not successful. So I will just put him to the pastor teacher training. Because as as the case of in India, you can find many idols just pass by the road, keep a stone. They have such a reverential fear. We are not just making them about mockery of their idols, but we are telling them they are having such sort of a fear. If you would say that you are a pastor, they would really respect you, and they would give you such sort of a great respect compared to like a god because they could find no difference between those stones and you because they say you are a man of righteousness and truth but the sad part is you cannot even face the things pertaining to the truth what has been given for you to the standards of their levels of morality you know very well what a crooked mental guy you are so they would think out of the fourth son whom I have let him become for training for three years or four years and afterwards let him go to any one of the villages. They will be successful. They can happily sing two songs. They can make the crowd to jump and dance. They can make the crowd to say we are anointed by the things pertaining to the Holy Spirit. So we have the miracles of the healings and the tongues. If needed, show some fake uh, testimonies. And continue to run the church and say, if they don't believe in Christ, they will die. Why you want to believe in Christ? Just for the sake of your salvation, you are the men of most uh, pitiable. You know why? We're not just coming over here for our salvation. We're not just getting married to a Christ for the sake of having a rich man so that we can have the luxuries as a precarious woman or a wife. We're coming over here to be a right and a suitable helpmate for the Lord God in doing and fulfilling His will and work for this earth. That's what we're coming to church. That's what we're coming to Christ. The work which Christ, the Lord of our God, left over to be continued through his wife, we are here to do it. But they don't mind that. They want the miracles, the healings, the tongues, no proper teaching of the word of Lord God, and they would think they really achieved great things in this life. It's a very, very sad thing in our lives, dear brother. What is there in the Bible? Simply teach it. Know the difference between the completer and the before completion of the canon of Scripture, the spiritual gifts, the gifts what we are having now, permanent spiritual gifts over the temporal spiritual gifts which were in the past. And knuckleheads are so much to put even into the YouTube rules. They would say discernment of the spirits. If you have the discernment of the spirit, your motivation will say that. Your intuition will say that. Not at all. Discernment of the spirits. If you have the temporal spiritual gift which was there in the past, today you don't have. I wish God the Father would have kept that that, that pneuma crino or crino pneumo, which is called for us to look if a pastor teacher is preaching or any other knucklehead is preaching, if they're not in align with the pertaining work of Lord God's will and plan, you would see Simply stand up and say, having that gift, whether you receive or reject. If it is in accord with the plan of God, you would say, yes, it is true, accept it. If it is not in accord with the word of God, what you would say, you would say, reject it, because this is not in accord with the plan of God, because that time the canon of scripture was not completed. But now you have the completed canon of scripture. You yourselves have to cross-check and look as such how you are able to build up your house, whether you are able to build up with gold, silver, precious stones, or with wood and stubble. So be careful how you're going to build up your house. You yourself have to be very, very careful. Take heed, he uses the word. Because there are many men who have come to Dobby with untempered mortar. 
They're not at all able to teach to you the right word of Lord God. They're not able to teach to you the things pertaining to the will of Lord God. And that they're saying we will be the pastors because they're just happy to come back and make up their lives to feed some bellies or to be fed from them because it thinks he's a pastor as the one in Judges chapter 17 when we look upon the way from the tribe of Dan, how they took him out. The priest just for some ten shekels of silver and a, and a, and a, and a goat skin or a, or, or, a, or a skin of a goat which he wants to wear it up, you know. He would become a priest. He's not a pure Levite. And the man who appointed him thinks, now God is there with me, so no problem. All things will be good for me. You know, that Judges chapter 17, it's very, very interesting passage. He says, having to appoint a priest. His name was Micah. And the meaning of the word Micah meant to say, what, who is like God again? So he said unto his mother, the 1100 shekels of silver that they were taken from thee, about which you have, you have cursed and spake of also in my ears. Behold, the silver is with me. I took it, and his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. And when he had restored the 1100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver to the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now therefore I will restore it unto thee. Yet he restored the money unto his mother, and his mother took the 200 shekels of silver and gave them to the founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of guards and made an apod and, and, and teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became his priest. In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And there was a young man of Bethlehem at Judah of the family of Zuda, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. And the man departed of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn, where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim to the house of Micah, as he sojourned, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, When do come from? And he said unto him, I am a Levite. You know, today this thing is happening for the pastors. They haven't been called by the Lord God. They are in search for the life. They are in search for the belly. They are in search for the food. They are in search for the standards of making their life to survive. That's it. They are not coming to really diligently search the word of Lord God and talk the word of Lord God in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. The great problem, the great curse to the present Christendom is such fake pastor teachers who don't have the bona fide gift. And they think my dad is a pastor so he can become a pastor. They think Lord God spoke to him in the night so that he can become such and such man. But the word of Lord God says, these are not been sent by me. If I have sent them, they would have taught you the entire counsel of Bible doctrine. They would have made you to stick to the word of Lord God accurately. But I haven't sent them at the run. So dear brethren, he says over here, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn, where I may find a place. And Micah said unto him, Dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest. And I will give you ten shekels of silver by the ear, and a suit of apparel. That's what the way how they would appear in the goat skin. And thy rituals. So the Levite went in, and the Levite was content to dwell with the man, and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. <laughs> this is what the agreement is happening today in the churches. Working for some bread, working for some money, working for some stupid things, but never having the burden of making every believer to be perfect and complete. In all counsel and wisdom of the word of Lord God, never in the lifetime they will come. And why is it? No fear of the Lord God, that's why. And it's a very, very sad thing for us to know. That the word of Lord God is not being taught accurately in our pulpits. And that people are thinking it's a great work what they have done. But they haven't realized what a stupid thing they are able to perform. How many years of ministry they will say? Two years and what? It's okay you can sing. It's okay you can make some to read the passages. Come and appoint to be in the church. And that guy goes to run the church singing song, singing song, singing song. And what is there in the scripture? 
when you have been filled with the word of Lord God, Colossians 3.16, then you can make melody in your heart. But these people don't even know that. Because the word is not being fully multiplied. What they know? They know only to sing and dance if needed. In some Pentecostal churches, even they do not know, particularly in India, what we notice, you can find them if it is there in the YouTube. The clothes have been uh, removing out because removing in the out in the sense they are jumping and they are not even aware that the clothes have been fallen off from their body. The woman, what we talk in service, what they have been uh, tying up. And she goes on to jumping, 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 whether she goes forward or backward or sideboard, she doesn't know. But she even comes to fall upon the people, they doesn't know whether she has been with the clothes or not. But she would say she is in the spirit. The pastor would say she is in the spirit. Church is not a place for nonsense and nuisance. That's what he writes in First Corinthians chapter 14. Everything let it be done in order. And today people are not happy to know them. The elders were appointed in Titus chapter 1. He said, set the things which have been ordained for you to do. It's a high wake-up call for us today in the church church to wake up and to set back once again the things what the Bible demands, not the religion-minded, Holy Spirit, ghost of movement, emphasizing in tongues or miracles or healings, not the realm of Pentecostal meetings, solid doctrine, Talk what the word of Lord God says. What is there in the Bible? Go back and look and take. That's what you have been called to be able. But many will not be able, he said. And the reasons why they're not able, because they don't love the Lord my God. And what they look for, what they wait for, what they understand for, stupidity. That's what they look. Stupidity, that's what they think. And that's what they're happy to continue in their life. So he says, oh dear brethren, this one, he makes up an agreement for, for 10 shekels of silver and a suit of apparel and thy rituals. And the Levite was content to dwell with the man and the young man was unto him as one of his sons. And Micah consecrated the Levite, not Levite consecrating the Micah, but Lev Micah consecrated the Levite, and the young man became his priest, and he was in the house of Micah. Then said Micah, Now know that I, the Lord, will, be, will do me good, seeing I have Levite have to my priest. This is what exact summary of present Christendom pastors are standing in the pulpits. People are thinking they just have a pastor, it's enough for marriage, for burial, for baptisms during marriage. They do not even know the real meaning of the pastor-teacher. The real work of pastor-teacher. Therefore, cleverly, the Western may come and say, we are having such a titles for us, like reverend, or brothers, or Presbyterian, whatever it is. But they have lost the legal title, which is called to be pastor teacher. If you are a pastor teacher, they don't enter the pulpit. But if you would say, I'm a reverend, I'm a bishop, just throw that out. It has not been there in the Bible. You'll not find the title for a reverend. You'll not find the title for a bishop to come and preach. He says, Bishop being ordained to go back and look if he's having such and such characters. Let him be in the process of philosenia. Let him be in the process of philoagathon. Let him be in the process of suffering. Let him be in the process of making up that which is right and good as hagios to the Lord. And let him be caretaking of the rules given to him by the word of God through the pastor teacher in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Right. But he would say, I'll be bishop. If I need, I'll become a pope. Who cares? What is not there in the Bible, how you can be? Do you think you find the word pope in the Bible? Do you think you can find the word reverend in the Bible, apart from the character of my Lord God to be expressed in the book of Psalms? Or do you think he gave some apostles and prophets and some evangelists and some pastor teachers? The word right word is pastor teachers. Apostles have done their work, prophets have done their work, the gifts which are operating now, evangelism and pastor teacher, evangelism for gynec work, pastor teacher, pediatrician work. Teach them, train them up. Not with the stupid clergy titles, they have rotten the church age. Therefore the noise of the strangers is vast. They have not been brought to made low. 
the voice of the strangers they crack out and they talk because the voice of the Holy Spirit of Lord God is been not speaking because the preachers have become dumb dogs to preach the truth because they themselves not know what is the truth if they would know they would ask the church to come and carry their cross every day and learn the word of Lord God Every day they would make them to go back to the process of iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, and rightly dividing the word of truth. They would help them. Every day they would ask to come and join. Every day, not weekly once, every day, literally every day. Within 24 hours again, they have to be tomorrow here to learn the word of the Lord. But today, dear brethren, we have lost that essence. And yet... God the Father would say, they are not able to walk in the straight gate. They cannot be able. Many would love to walk, but they cannot be able. And why they are not able? Because they haven't been sent by the Lord God. If you have the burden of the Lord God, being born by the will of Lord God, you would continue to do the glory of Lord God, not just to produce the fruit, but you will be in the process of producing more fruit. more fruit he will be producing you to get more fruit and that dear brethren he said I will reprove them aglanco and convict them therefore be zealous and repent <laughs> Where is the process of becoming a scribe to the world? How can you aglanco them if you're not becoming a scribe? If you're not able to be in the compartment or the word meant to say into that arena of geographical location what Lord God the Father wants in Matthew 13, 52 joined as disciples and grew up into grammatists. If you are not standing in that point, how can you reprove? How can you go to aglanco? You cannot go to the process of aglanco. <laughs> And that's what we're finding today in our churches. People have been far away from the word of the Lord. And that they're not at all happy to know what is there in the Bible. To know what the word teaches to them in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. They are not at all able to be happy. What are the reasons? The love towards my God has gone old. It's not like the process of becoming something new in kind of creation of the Lord God. It is exactly the Old Testament love. The love that they fell for the sin. It has gone completely chilled off, cold. And that's what God the Father wishes. I wish either you were hot or cold, but you will not be either hot or cold. You will love to become to say that we are hot. But you will be like lukewarm. And yet, dear brethren, if God the Father is giving you one more chance to know the truth, wake up to the reality. If you don't know the word of Lord God to serve Him in spirit and biblical truth, Wake up to know the reality and learn the word of truth so that the word of truth alone can set you free. The noise of the strangers is vast compared to the voice of the Holy Spirit because you haven't reached the place called Kana. You haven't have in your vigor and valor like ascribed the thinking of the word of the Lord. And that dear brethren, how many days more you want to spend your time in vanity, you think? As we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. So with our head burned eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In order of returning to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of His soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the moment itself we shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, we shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where we teach and learn to acquire the possession of the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, 
the greatest matters to care is Sathan Lagan, herald the word in season out of sin because the diamantrum of witnesses where it have been called. The number one diamantrum of witnesses in Wellington Unity, for the Bible in our hands. And number two diamantrum of witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter how the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us, the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. This will be the continuation of the previous tape. Since there are some disturbances as well, try to understand the word of Lord God as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, led us to the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, being thankful for this privilege to have fellowship with through the through the word, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten the challenge and to bless us by this message. In Christ's name, we ask for Lord. Amen.